Hi everyone, it's Drew from Cyclone Gunworks. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the tools and techniques I use to get a high quality stipple job with these clean borders. And I'm going to show you step A to Z in this video today. All the tools I use will be linked in the description below. Let's get started. First, you want to make your outline using a ruler on the straight lines. Don't worry too much about this because it's just really to get a theory. As you see here, I freehand a lot of the work I do. And again, you're not creating your borders, you're just essentially planning your borders. Um, I like to inspire myself from the features of the factory grip that's already there in terms of the angles and the corners and the edges so you see I've rounded off my corners similar to how CZ chose to round off their corners and I like to use a pencil too because it's easy to wipe off and you can make adjustments as you go as you're making your way along you can make changes get inspired get creative you can't mess this up because after all it is art and take your time using these techniques this first tool I'm using is called a flex cut this is what I use to do my border work okay if you get the impression that I'm struggling it just looks like that because I am going very deep you can shave thin lines with this or you can go very deep with this when deeper you go, the more resistance you get. Now be very careful because you can stab yourself with this and get injured very easily. Okay? So, one technique you see me doing here is a little wiggle. A wiggle will allow you to move very slow without the chance of slipping off line from where you want to go. So for these tight corners, wiggle your way through. And then for a real tight corner, don't even move the tool. Keep it stuck in place and carefully twist the firearm. And you'll get a tight corner like that. Okay, now on these straight lines, this is where I tend to use a little less pressure. And chip at it with more shallow passes with several shallow passes and a good rule of thumb is to go back and forth in both directions which you'll see in a little bit I went ahead and stopped here because before I went any further I wanted to be sure of myself on what I wanted to do with my design so that's all I'm doing here is kinda of touching up before I continue in this critical area and make these decisions take your time so here I'm wiggling through my corner, okay, and now I'm going to go back, and I kind of work backwards throughout the entire process. I'll create a line, and then I'll clean up a line. Go through it one way, go back through that valley the other way. Here what I'm doing is adding almost no pressure at all. Little, little shavings are coming off, making that line more and more refined. When working with the trigger guard undercut, try to aim with your flex tool towards the grip because there's just not enough space the other way and the grip is almost entirely in your way and you'll most likely get injured. So just take your time in this area and cut towards your grip. Around the mag release is a good opportunity to get creative. I did keep it simple with this project, uh, just rounded edges. Here I even have a hard corner that I went ahead and just barely rounded off. Whether it's a small corner or a big corner, I made them all rounded just to have an overall nice theme. Now as I go this direction, you'll see I slip. Okay, not here, but right here I'm about to slip. Now, that can come out worse sometimes if you're not careful, okay? So what you want to do is, whenever you're working in an area like that, 
right now I'm just double checking my other side to make sure they match and I'm my pencil has been wiped off from handling the frame and I'm going ahead and redrawing and making sure they match continuing on when I do this corner I'm going to work from that corner back towards my mag release so that if I do slip I'm not going above my border lines that I'm creating uh, and putting marks just below the slide once you're done with all your borders you're going to start recessing them with a sanding drum what you're doing here is essentially staying away from the final outside border with your flex tool you just used you've created a valley you want to use this tool to get halfway into that valley and recess it away from your outside line careful getting into corners don't worry about them now we'll take care of them later with another tool you just want to get all the majority recessing done with this and as you're recessing you see I kind of move away from it blending all of it to have a nice equal level spot although that doesn't matter much the area you stipple does not have to be perfectly flat but it's just good to blend the ergonomics of your weapon when you're removing factory texture keep in mind here I see people go crazy just left to right scraping like they're shoveling you want to remove as little material as you possibly do so you could tell here the grayer tone is simply the scuffed area and the black that's being revealed is the untouched as soon as it disappears oop, I know I need to move on and then there I go and I back feather moving on here I am just finishing up with all of my borders I'm recessing them with my sanding drum by the way I use a 600 grit I have the links below with that kit um, a 600 grit drum allows you to have a lot less you know room for mistakes a lot more room for mistakes excuse me and it leaves less scratches behind it leaves a smoother surface so when you're polishing and finishing things it's a little bit easier to work with now inside the grip area here is one of the hardest areas to do all the work whether it's creating your border recessing your border or even stippling so you see how I work from one side to the other not overdoing it take your time there and be careful you almost barely have to do any recessing in here and again do not hit your border if you're getting too close don't worry about it right here I got a little risky so I'm about to show you the tool to use to get the recessing done in the finer areas all right now that we've done most of the recessing with the drum in all the spots that we could reach we're now going to use the next tool it's the carbide tip this will rip material away very quickly so you want to use very little pressure when using this as you see I'm now able to get inside those tight corners and recess them okay this actually does a pretty good job at cleaning up those outside lines as well but be careful because this bit will bite into the polymer and it'll fly across your frame messing up all this work you've done okay Like I said earlier, this trigger guard is one of the hardest areas to work with. There's such small space. You can actually do all the recessing with this tool. You don't have to use a drum. But you don't have to do too much either. You're just alleviating that valley you created from your channel tool. You're just recessing it barely. Whenever possible, try to use this tool perpendicular to the border you're working on that way if it does bite into the polymer and slip it will simply just go into your area you're going to be stippling not into your clean border work area also do not attempt to use the drum or the carbide bit to remove little flashing pieces of plastic that's what this tool here is for um, try to move along the lines when using this and move fast because it will melt the plastic as well 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're right about at the halfway point, so I just wanted to give a huge shout out to my favorite lube company, Shooter Lube. I just got a new package in from them that'll probably last me the next five to ten years. Um, the solvent bottle has a nifty little spray handle that has a safety on it. And no, that is not so that you don't shoot or lube you or someone you care about. It's so that you can just store it in your range bag and it won't leak. Okay? I think this solvent really is unlike any other cleaner. Most cleaners, people don't realize when you touch any surface with that, you need to get that off and or hit it with oil. Shooter lube solvent penetrates deep into the metal, making it easier to clean all the carbon buildup each time you use it. I feel it improves the overall metal over time and it just ha leaves no residue. It's odorless, there's no water, no hazard ingredients per EPA, no corrosion whatsoever. The oil has a precision needle point I like to use on my pistols to get inside the frame rails. Um, they also have the old school really ooze out point that you could soak up your barrels in the rifles if that's the way you like to do it. Uh, don't forget to use my link and my coupon code CYCLONE to save 10% and you might as well spend over $35 to get free shipping. Maybe get yourself a cool shirt. Alright, let's get back to business. Once you're satisfied with the quality of your borders, you're ready for the next step, which is stippling. Here I'm using two different tips. One is just shy of 2 millimeters, and the other larger tip is just shy of 4 millimeters. This is called the random big dot pattern. This is easy for beginners because it is so random. You'll see here I start with what's called a pre-border. I'm using the smaller tip which allows me to get comfortably close to my border without touching the border which you obviously aren't able to do with the larger tip. So be very careful, use a metal ruler if you have to to block the border. When going into corners it's best to stop short of them and actually put a perfect dot right in the corner and then work away from it on both sides just to have that clean consistent look. On a side note make sure you have a wipe off pad or some sort of Brillo. I use actually a grill brush to wipe off my tip. Every few contacts you're going to need to clean that polymer off. Here we are again at our difficult spot. You'll see that I'm pivoting my hand on the grip that way I'm almost having a more controlled contact when I make contact. It's almost like a drill press movement or a piston. Otherwise, I'd just be coming in jabbing at that area. So I want to have a precise contact. So rest and pivot your hands anywhere and anytime you can when stippling just to have better control. Once you're done with the pre-border using the smaller tip, you're going to go on to the next step using, again, the smaller tip. I like to go throughout the entire grip area and do just kind of randomized, you can stagger these if you want, um, but I just do randomized dots, and this is the first of two layers with this pattern. Now you'll see here, just for the purpose of the video I'm showing you, this first layer with this such random pattern doesn't have to be perfect okay to prove it I'm gonna go against my better judgment and go just a little bit crazy here and wonky but hey if you can keep it consistent consistency if you've watched my other videos is the key to a quality stipple job here I'm simply trying not to touch the borders it's very important when stippling in general to not overlap your stipple contacts. So now that I'm done here, I'm going to put on my eye protection and just very, very lightly get rid of some of the leftover snags here, all the flashing it's called, um, get rid of the plastic before my next step. Again, be very careful because you will burn this plastic, so don't spend too much time in one spot. 
and try to avoid those borders. Here I figured I'd clear something up. I get asked a lot what to practice on, different materials. There are good things. In fact, um, the box your Glock comes in is a good option. Uh, you've probably heard of PMAGs. But hey, don't be afraid to go ahead and try your design on the actual frame you're working on. For the purpose of this video now, I did it here for a clear view, but I wouldn't advise right on the side focal point of your stippled area. Do more like the inside of, uh, of the grip or the back side of the grip. But, as I was saying here, do try, try your pattern. See how it's going to come out. If it's not what you like, guess what? Go back, dremel it off, smooth it out, and try again. Now you're going to see how that pre-border comes in handy. It allows me to get as close as possible to the edge with this larger tip without risking touching my clean, perfect border. Now when you're applying this pattern, you don't want to have consistent rows of dots or lines of dots. You essentially want it staggered, but even at that point, you want it randomized, okay? It is called random big dot. Whatever path you choose of applying it, keep it consistent. One way I like to do it is I make these little circles smaller than a dime, and then I fill them in in a circle, just like that. And I continue on making these little sections, and then I circle around inside, purposely just barely covering my other dots, making contact on them about, you know, 10 to 15, maybe 20% stacking. You don't want a bunch of dots, you want dots that are touching. So just make your way through this and keep it consistent. Again, how, whatever path you choose, keep it consistent. Here we are at all of our favorite spots. We are almost done. Whenever I think I'm done, I like to do a once over and find spots like this that stick out, little inconspicuous things. Maybe you'll have a row of dots that you want to break up because we don't want those consistent rows. We want it randomized. So I'm filling areas that I missed here and just trying to make it look cleaner. Now this next trick I'm going to show you is not for everybody. You must be very, very careful. Do, less is more with this technique and do multiple stages. You're just barely touching it because what you're doing is you're getting rid of the flash. You see the little spark ups? That's basically the hairy plastic flattening itself and smoothing out. This does two things. It makes it look better and you can also stage by stage control how aggressive your frame actually is. Now in between each stage it's very important that you don't touch the stippled area. You want to set it down and don't touch it. Now here we are finally, our finished product. If you guys have any questions you know what to do. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, send me an email at Cyclone Gunworks at gmail.com and again below in the description every single tool I used here today will have a link thank you all for your support and good luck you can do it